got a lot of info so far, right? Felt a little burned out, I'm sure. <laughs> I was excited to go to teach when I'm teaching, but then I was like, oh man, I'm going to be super burned by the end of the day. So I'll just try to give you the bits and pieces. And I'm really big on questions. So if you have any questions, just ask. Feel free to just jump in with an insight. If, if anything seems weird to you, just jump, just like, in terms of like the subculture sometimes of speech and debate can be its own kind of like weird bubble. That, and there's things that like I don't even see anymore. So just jump in and let me know. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm a, my name's Rob Hawkins. Um, you guys just call me Rob if you see me. I'm the uh, director of speech and debate at DVC. So um, I'm the head guy over at Diablo Valley College. But you know, I'm born and bred in Northern California, um, meaning I grew up here, but I also um, did speech and debate here. I sort of began to find my love of speech and debate. I've been coming to Santa Rosa since I've been like an eighth, like ninth, ninth grader. So, um, so my background is I competed in high school. I competed at uh, James Logan High in Union City, um, and it was for a very large program, about 100, 100 plus students. And, um, had a wonderful experience. Went to SF State, go Gators, scoot scoot, right? And then uh, I got over there and just took a year off because I just was burned out. I was just done with teaching debate. I was like, this is too much. I can't. So then, um, but I peeked my head in, and one of my friends, one of my homies was like, hey, dude, like, why don't you join? I know you're hella tight. And I was like, ah. So, but then I went to a tournament. I actually went to a, a big four-year four -year tournament in LA, and uh, I was blown away. I thought, I was like, whoa. I was like, this is way cooler. <laughs> you mean to tell me I can actually talk about real things, and like, I don't have to censor what I what I want to say, and like I can go after you know all the any any issues I care about, and I can be creative, and I can just basically like explore. Count me in, because I because I did high school speech, and it was just it's all censorship, it's all like catering to parents and stuff, and it's just not it's boring. <laughs> and then by the time it was over, I was just done. So once I got into college speech, I just got obsessed again and competed for two years. Uh, got to the four-year final my first year, broke a bunch of stuff, and then the next year I took it home and got a, a championship, uh, SF State's only uh, AFA DI champ, still no one's got it, um, in, in 05. So I got my title, I got what I always wanted, which was, was my, big, my big deal. So I'm a big interp dude, I've been doing it for a long time. I coached um, my high school team for, for six or seven years, had a bunch of success, and then decided like, I don't want to be an English teacher anymore. I want to be a coach full time. So now I've been at DVC for four years, and I love it, man. And so, all, so the biggest point I want to make is that, like, if you see me around, just ask me for question. Ask me any questions if you have any, like, you know, um, anything. Also, write my email address down. Like, I'm a, I'm a resource. Um, it's really like the last two or three years I've been just trying to build my program, but now like. I'm really trying to support the region. So if you all, you know, uh, ever want to ask me anything, I'm, I'm like an encyclopedia when it comes to literature. If you have like a piece or an idea as specific as you want, just let me know. I'll, 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 try, I'll get back to you with something. I, I, and um, if you have any questions, just, um, just reach out because, you know, we can't really think of ourselves as like separate schools, you know. Like I think we're a region and we need to try and support each other a little bit better. So, um, just a couple of my, a little bit of my history. So, like, City College, I, I can find, uh, anyone from City in the house? Yeah, yeah scoo, scoo. So, I was over there with Nathan um, for, for two years, competing at City, I mean, uh, coaching with City. So, like, I got some roots over there. And then I just kind of, like, have been jumping around, um, you know, but, I'm, but my DVC is my home. But in general, like, I consider all the NorCal schools, like, my, 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 my schools, you know what I'm saying? So, let's just quick, like, just go around, man. Let's see who's in the room, right? That's me. Rob Hawkins, speech and debate is my life. Hella love it. Um, just in, give me your names, goals, school, and then any goals or events or what are you thinking, and anything I can just give give me a sense of kind of what you're competing in or what you're thinking about competing in. We'll start on this side and then we'll move down. Well, ho well hopefully um, after this is over, at least you'll get a, an insight into uh, these other styles of events. But maybe um, you'll also potentially be inspired to potentially try one to try one of these events because. What's really unique about programs is that you can make them about anything, anything you care about. If, if there's literature about it, you can do a speech about it. So it can be super specific. If it's uh, autobiographical, I've seen POIs about like Bill. So I so I always tell people that when I was in college, I did a POI about Bill Cosby. <laughs> it was all about like how great of a dad he was and like. 
he was a mentor to like black men and like I had all this stuff about it and now I'm like oh yeah because <laughs> he's like not any of those things uh, but um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to do something on Bill Cosby because I thought I had a good Cosby impression at the time but now um, you know, uh, you know, you can do a POI about anything. Toxic masculinity is like a, a great example of like a political topic, right? A lot of poetry, a lot of things about it. So, um, if you're thinking about like this event or trying it, it is, in my opinion, the easiest to find literature for, because you you know you can use anything. The, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Quick, what's your... uh, yeah Professor yeah. Robert Hawkins, uh, uh, I was fortunate to have uh, 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 Dr. Bill Cosby. On the when I joined the Glide Church, yeah, uh, he, Glide he, yeah, he, uh, he's, he's on the uh, uh, board of directors of, of Glide Church, sure. and we were doing like we did a concert at the Opera House. They were selling tickets for a uh, hundred thousand dollars each, and uh, they, they they sold out, and we we raised four million dollars for that concert. Yeah, that concert. that's amazing. Yeah, so not 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 to. Uh, go too far into the Bill Cosby thing, but oftentimes there are these figureheads who have done really important work, you know. On the other hand, the reality of, you know, the allegations and like what he's committed, he's admitted to is also there. But that's also like a fantastic topic for a speech, you know what I mean? Like, to talk about like what happens when, you know, the, the people that we look to are convicted of crimes, right? Like how do we deal with that? How do we negotiate that, right? So, cool stuff, all right. So, so I want to just kind of touch on two different things, like my, my objectives too, is to talk about like two things. Like I want to talk about what a program is, right? And, and the two types, poetry, there's actually three. Poetry, a poetry program, which is 10 minutes of poetry. A POI, which is 10 minutes of articles, narratives, stand-up comedy, YouTube videos, whatever, you name it. And then something that's called a program duo, which is a duo that uses all of those things, articles and narratives, to make a point, right? Then I want to talk like a little bit about some strategies that you can use to just get one of these started, and then I want to give you a format that you can follow, okay? When I was competing, what my number one strategy for success, because you, because I'm like a lot of y'all, like like I had my coach. Well, I mean not like a lot of y'all, but like I didn't really have a coach when I competed. I had to crowdsource my success. <laughs> and, and what I did was I looked at the person who I thought was the best, and I copied what they did. I didn't copy it, like literally copy it, but I copied. I copied the structure, I copied like their, their information. I'm looking around for like an AC as so we get a little warm here. So what I want to do is I actually want my objective is so that you can leave knowing how to put one together. Meaning straight up like you could go home tonight, do these things, put it together, and have a POI done. And then once you've mastered a, a basic structure, then change it. Like then you can experiment. But I, but when I went, and I, I would copy the best people. Then I would copy their format, and then after a, a tournament, I would change it, and I would evolve. I would create. I would turn it into something new. But you got to start from somewhere. So that's my kind of my kind of deal today is to give you a sense of what a program is, and then to help you basically build one if you decide to do so. Okay. So a couple of big disclaimers though I want to say for the first off though is that there's no one right way to do anything. Like every person can do things differently. I am by no means the like definitive god of speech and debate. I'm just a student of the game. Like you can really do your thing, like change it, mix there is no one way to do things. So like if any coach ever tells you there's one way to do things, they're wrong. <laughs> there are rules, right? Stuff's like 10 minutes long and you gotta have this, right? But in terms of style, like it depends on the speech. The second, the second thing I, I want to talk about is that this, in my opinion, is one of the most creative of all the events because you're taking a bunch of literature that was written separately, you're bringing it together, and you're creating something new. Okay. And then finally, while there is no rule, there is no one right way, there are some things that you see in pretty much every amazing speech, right? You, you always see a little bit of humor in the beginning, right? You, then you always have a big moment at the end. So I want to also pull back the curtain a little bit and show y'all, like, if you're putting together a program, like, here, every, you know, it's not hard. Like, here's what the actual people, like, look, look, do. So you can get a little sense of those, like, unspoken rules of, of, of speech and debate. So, what I, so before I get into the genres, I actually want to show y'all a video. 
And um, I will send these videos to the coaches uh, as a resource. And so this is an example of a program, a poetry program that was in the national final uh, in 2016 that he got fourth. Um, but what I like about it is the distinction between his characters and how easy it is to follow the piece. So my task for you is this. When you're watching the video, I want you to ask yourself, how many different styles of poetry did he use? What did you notice about how the pace developed over time? And then what did you notice about how his major point developed over time? So um, it, it's, uh, it's a dope performance. Uh, someone grab the lights for me. Uh, just kidding. Oh, cool. So we're just going to watch it. It's a straight up 10 minute presentation. Now this is a poetry program, so he took different styles of poetry, he put them together to build an argument. So, let's do it. There! Okay, so, uh, I chose that because his, his style is very clean, and I thought it would be a, a cool like uh, sample to show, because the video quality is the best, quite frankly. <laughs> Not a lot of good videos online, so. Uh, I'll have to put you guys to sleep. <laughs> so my, my whole deal with that, I want to just kind of give you a sense of like the, the program stuff and like, you know, what how a program develops and whatnot. So what do you, what do you just general thoughts or like what did you notice about it? Style, any, any questions, anything? Yeah. I noticed the Cat Williams bit that he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we had humor. Programs have humor. You gotta have some comedy. Now notice how did the humor develop from the beginning to the end of the presentation? Would you, like, how, yeah, go for it. So it started off like it was humor to capture the audience's attention. Yep. And then as it progressed, it started getting more to, like more serious, that way you could hit the climax. Yeah, totally. And for some people, the strategy is they just, halfway through, they just stop being funny. Um, but I always like it when a performer is still funny, but it's like not funny anymore, because <laughs> it kind of sets up the humor pretty well. So you got to have humor, because it breaks the ice, right? But obviously, you can't be funny the whole time. Cool. What other things did you guys notice about like the program? Any questions? Any things that were confusing or peculiar? Um, because there, a couple of things I wanted to t touch on are juxtaposition, right? So part of what makes a program good is taking this thing and a, 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 a putting it against this other thing, putting taking this humor and putting it against this dramatic thing, right? And then the other big thing I want to say is the excerpts. Right? It's really just a bunch of excerpts, if you think about it. If you follow his presentation, it's just like a bunch of paragraphs, that's all. And, and what I like about his speech so much is that each little bit is its own, like, it's almost like changing the channel on TV, right? Each little bit is its own little thing. It has a beginning and end, he turns the page. Beginning and end, turns the page. And those, those excerpts are really only like three to four sentences. You can have longer ones if you want a longer section at the end, or you can have shorter ones if you want a shorter section. But all you need to do is basically find those excerpts and then, and then um, that, that'll, that'll get you there. Okay, so I want to talk about the, the first style of, of POI. And even if you're not going to do one, you might want to get this information for someone who on your team who may be doing one because I can, I can tell you right now, like, you can go and do a topic, like, tonight, if you follow this format. Okay. So, the first, the first thing I'll, I'll talk about is, like, in any program of oral interp, right, one that's not just poetry, but lots of different literatures, you need these six things, okay? You need a narrative. That means you need a central story. So, give me, like, a political issue. Anything. Something that's going on in the world. Or maybe something that you're working on. A political issue in the world? Yeah. You are turning uh, right. Oh, okay. So completely okay. to the right side. It's something easier than that. <laughs> Just Let's go with toxic masculinity. Okay. So, if you're, if I was gonna, if I was gonna put a program together on toxic masculinity, what's the first thing I would need to do? I would need to find a story. One story. It could be a short story. It could be a play. It could be a, a, a narrative poem. But I need one central story that brings my whole, my whole speech together. This is what I call the anchor piece. It's the, the main piece that has the most, that brings the whole program together. 
One of the best POIs they ever saw was on the Confederate flag, right? And in the intro, she introduced the Confederate flag, had a lot of jokes, closed her book, Confederate flag, belong in the museum, blah, blah, blah. And then she started her narrative, and her narrative was really interesting. It was a, an African-American woman who was in an interracial relationship with a white gentleman. And it was all about how much she loved the guy, and so she did a little bit of it, and then she moved on, and then she did a little bit more in the middle, and she's like, and you know, talking about they're, they're in an intimate moment. And then I was like, and, and I was watching the piece going, where is this going? <laughs> like, what does this have to do with the Confederate flag? So then she gets to the climax, and the guy that she's in the relationship with, they're about to get it on, and he takes his shirt off, and he's got a Confederate flag on his chest. And she's just like stuck. Like, how do I deal with this dude that I like, who has a symbol of what I, that this particular person considered to be hate. Like, and it was this crazy realization she had that was cool, because what, it, what the narrative lets us do is instead of just going up and saying, blah, 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 here's my opinion, Trump is bad, you show it, okay? So every single piece needs a narrative that shows the effect of your topic. The next is poetry. If, if you're doing a POI, you have to have poetry in it, and a slam poem that relates to your topic. So you could have a slam poem about toxic masculinity, cool. Nonfiction, you need an article, okay? So now it's like, I got, I know my main piece, I went on a blog, I found a story about toxic masculinity, I went on Button, I found a poem, two poems about toxic masculinity, I went on The Atlantic, I went on the internet, I found an article, and then the, la the next two things you need are all the pen. You need comedy. You gotta have something funny. Like in POI, people don't want you to just go up and be serious the whole time. The best comedy that I usually look for is on YouTube videos. So like one of the best POIs I have, I've ever seen was about Adderall abuse, right? Which is like abusing Adderall as a study drug and like the problems with it. And his comedy was a bunch of YouTube videos that are like real videos of people like teaching you how to snort Adderall. <laughs> so so his like opening, his opening thing is like, the first thing you do is you take it in and you snort it and you say, woo! And he's just like talking, he's like, he's, it's, he's like, it's really funny. Anyway, but he just went to a YouTube video, found it, wrote it out, had his humor. And then the other big thing you need is you need a counter argument. So like, you need somewhat, something that goes against the, op the direction of your piece. So like, that shows you like, you know, what the other side would say. So in the Confederate flag POI, her counter argument was a guy who was supporting the flag and talking about how the flag is a, is, is a symbol for this and like it's a symbol for culture. And then like, so she played him and then she went into someone refuting it. So you need a, a counter argument. What's like, a, 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 like, a, like the, the, the most like nauseating debate that we're having in our country right now? Like echo chamber, right? The kneeling at the flag thing, right? And then the Nike ad with Colin Kaepernick, blah, 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 right? And it's just like two people and two sides just kind of were so viciously on the polar opposites about how they feel about things. Just basically talking past each other, you know? So if I were to put a program together on that, I could have like an athlete, you know, I could have like a black police officer, you know, which is like a, a good perspective. There's all this slam poetry. I can find an article, comedic, and then I could have someone on the other side. And that will then be what I need. So once you've found these things, you're good. Now you just need to put it together. Okay, so this is the thing that I would recommend if you're at all interested in doing one that you just copy, right? That's the outline. So now you need to outline your presentation. Uh, this is just an outline that I think is a really easy outline to follow. One thing I'll add, 1,200 words. Or, or anywhere from, sorry, I take that back. Anywhere from 1,000 to, I'd say, 1,150 words. With this, is, this is not including the intro. So if you think about it, like, you know, that's not that much. So, so let's say I was trying to put together a POI on, you know, uh, the the the, uh, the football kneeling thing, right? My opening thing would be a comedy sketch about it. Open the book, comedy sketch, some SNL skit, right? I'll just open it, do a funny SNL skit, done. I'll do a little section of that. Turn the page, a little bit of poetry, just to kind of set the tone. Turn the page, nonfiction. Introduce the art, introduce the topic. Then, number four, opposing view, right? Give us a little taste of the counter argument. And then five, cliffhanger. 
This could be anything. Some kind of little cliffhanger that kind of lets me kind of, if you think about what a teaser is supposed to do, it has three goals. To tell me what the topic is, to set the tone, and to preview the different literature you're using. And you can do this in, in pretty much any order, but I always like to break the ice with comedy because, you know, comedy breaks the ice, right? What are the topics you guys thinking about? What other things are like, maybe like in other events you're working on, or does anyone have like a topic that you could help with at all that, they're, that they settled on? Anyone? Go, ahead. go, 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 go. go. Uh, mine is the power of prayer. Okay, so there was a POI on the power of prayer. Like uh, a couple of years ago, they got to the final. And he had, um, so he, he kind of talked about it more in more general terms, because obviously not everyone in, in the speech and debate community is uh, Christian or, or prays. But he talked about prayer kind of in the context of like, uh, of like, he, he, he talked about it like religiously, but he had, an opening sketch that was kind of funny that was about um, praying with his grandma and kind of trying to learn why why she did that and he didn't understand when he was a kid he just didn't want to go to church because <laughs> he's like a kid he's like I don't want to go to church um, and then he had a poem that was all about praying and like culture and like that then he had an article that talked about like that and then he had some other stuff some opposing stuff um, yeah that 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 so he was able to kind of like, even though it was so specific that, you know, he, 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 even though he was a, Christ, a Christian student and was, you know, talking in the speech and debate community, which is like a very widely diverse community, he was still able to like talk about his topic without it being too much like, if you're not a Christian, you're not going to like this kind of deal. So, um, yeah, but so that's definitely on the more difficult side. Okay, go ahead and get this next. Just, just write this down. Okay, <laughs> so, so then you close your book, you have your intro. Then right out of the intro, start your story, whatever your story is. So let's say you're doing like immigration, right? And you're doing like, but let's say you're doing child separation. Let's say that's your topic, right? It, which is a great, like important topic to talk about right now. Let's say your narrative is like from the perspective of someone who is crossing the, the border, right? And we're sort of like seeing, because we're, we're debating like this issue of, of the border, you know, separation of families, 90% of people are against it, but we're never really hearing, like, the actual people who are affected by it. <laughs> we're just kind of talking about them. And it's so funny because I went to a bunch of protests, and I went to, the difference between the protests in, like, Oakland and the protests in San Francisco is, like, night and day. Because the one in San Francisco, I'm like, and I get why, like, there's not a lot of representation, but it's, like, put up mostly white people. And it's, like, bagels and, like, like, <laughs> Everyone has lattes, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, like, this is like an issue, people. We should be, you know, everyone's giving out signs, and hey, I really like your sign. It's funny. Can you picture it? Like, it felt very like, <laughs> what are we here for? And then I was also kind of wondering, like, where are the people? You know, like, where are the, the actual, like, people that we're talking about? And it, it was a weird experience because I'd never been to a protest in San Francisco. Um, but the point is, oftentimes we have these debates about issues and we don't have the actual person's voice in it. <laughs> so in that case, let's say I was doing the, the parent, uh, the uh, child separation issue, boom, I'd have a narrative from like a parent, right? Then I'd have some comedy that I, I'd have to figure out to break the ice. And it's, sometimes it's hard to talk about certain things in a funny way, unless you're like, but what, but like, one of the things, we're doing a program on something similar this year, and we're, and we're using um, the show on Showtime, Who is America? I don't know if anyone's seen it. Okay, it's Sasha Baron Cohen. But he does, he does like, a, um, he, he kind of pranks people, but like famous people. But basically, uh, he has this one where he like pretends he's, it's a, it's a quinceanera, and he like gets people to come, and like it's really funny, so we're using that. Anyway, then I would put a little counter argument in there to build the tension, bring it back to my article, explain my point, give me a little poetry, then, then move on. Okay. And then the last, here are the last things I would do. Come back to my narrative, right? End my comedy. Give me more counter argument, have my climax, which is usually poetry, and then my narrative, and then my nonfiction resolution. So, just to kind of wrap this thing up here. Yeah. I just quickly wanted to ask um, if we're using a counter argument, for example, like how we're talking about Nike and Colin Kaepernick, yeah. is there like maybe like an example that could maybe be used as 
part of the counter argument? Sure. Like in what? Like what? Like what? Like um, let's what? say uh, using the Adidas, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that be like an example, or not necessarily? Yeah, that could work. You just need like an opposing voice. Yeah. Because if your whole speech is all like one direction, there's no tension. There's no conflict. That's true. And every and if your if your whole speech is just here's why this side is right, you're not really addressing what you're you know any good argument has to incorporate the, the opposition into it. So that could work. It could be a satirical thing, right? Okay. But you definitely need a counter argument to. Um, just to kind of like add contrast, because if you just go up and you're like, this is a one-sided issue, then it's like, so like the toxic masculinity point, you know, like, there's this play that came out, and it's called Locker Room Talk, where a playwright went to bars, went to locker rooms, put a, put a recorder out and said, I would like to record what you guys are saying. Took all of the recordings of everything that he heard, and it's bad, <laughs> and then turned it into a play. And, and, and instead of it being men performing the actual stuff, it's women who are actually going in front of the room performing what men say in lockers. And it's just, it's, it's, it's horrible. And after like 30 minutes of the play, you're just like, this is terrible. You're like, it's not funny anymore. But it, but it definitely like presents the opposing thing. And in, in a program that we did last year, we actually used some of that. And it showed the audience like, this is the problem that we're talking about. That's kind of like the point I'm making with the counter argument that when you're, you're, when you're talking about a problem, like you, have, you need to have a voice that says, like, this is what I mean, <laughs> and then explain why it's wrong. It adds tension to the program. OK, so that's a format that you can use for, P, for POI. OK, we're going to watch a POI. Um, it's kind of a downer, but it's really it's the best video quality that I could find. And she is, it's, it's very intense. Um, it follows a different structure than the one that I, that I, that I showed you. It, it has a lot of these tenants in it, but it's like, she's all over the place. But I think it's a good example of using different stories to kind of make a point. Okay, and then after this, we'll just kind of chat and like, you guys seem like you guys have been listening to folks all day. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. Okay, so choosing the final. Her thing is all about gun violence uh, and the relationship between gun violence and white males. Um, so it's very controversial, but it's the best video quality of the speech. I'm good. I know it's a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, it's it's heavy, right? But um, she does a great job of. Uh, Building the argument, you know, as it goes on, you know, she's also okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts? Any questions, man? Just general uh, kind of uh, observations. So the, the the point I wanted to make in showing you guys that is that you can make a really specific argument. You can bring a bunch of things together and make a very specific point. So if you guys are thinking, like, what topic should I choose, right? Think about viral articles, right? I think viral articles are, are great places to start. Like, they went viral for a reason. You know how, like, some article goes around, and it's this really, like, interesting thing that everyone's buzzing about? Those tend to be great jumping off points for, like, book discussions. And you can even mention the article in your intro. So, um, um, yeah, I think viral articles are, are good. And I also think autobiographical stuff. Speech and debate, why I love speech and debate is because of perspective. Like, I learned so much from listening to people talk about their perspectives. That I think as an educator and as a person, it makes me better. I learned to empathize. I learned about people that I, I, didn't, I would otherwise not know. So if you have a particular um, uh, you know, intersection that you would like to explore in your own personal identity, you don't feel obligated to, right? But um, it, it can potentially be something that is beneficial for people to hear. When I was in college, I did a POI on being uh, multi-ethnic. You know, what, what is it like growing up in a black and Latino family, right? My mom is Latino, my dad, my, my mom is Mexican, my dad is black. And I grew up in two separate environments where <coughs> both sides of my culture weren't really kind of accepted. Like blackness, there's a lot of anti-blackness, right, in uh, some, some, some Latino kind of families and cultures. So I did a whole program about it. And it was one of the best, most therapeutic programs I ever did because it allowed me to kind of address this personal thing that I that I had been always struggling with. 
and finally say what I wanted to say about it. I heard a really, um, this year we're working on a really cool POI with a neurodiverse student um, who's queer. And, and it's all about the coming out process and what, what happens when she comes out as neurodiverse, but what happens when she comes out as queer, right? And how those things kind of work together. And it's really fascinating to work on it with her because it's, so, I, it's, it's, it's a, a very interesting, it's also a perspective that you just don't hear very often. Okay, so last thing I want to do, and then you guys can take a break here. Right? I want you guys to, to, to know how to put together a poetry program if you ever decide to do one, okay? So first, so go ahead and write this down, but the first step is you need to collect poems, all different types. And you can find those on YouTube, books, but YouTube seems to be the place, right? And you need four, or at least four of these styles of poems. You need a narrative poem. You need a, just a straight up narrative poem that brings it all together. So in the, um, the previous speech about Donald Trump or whatnot, the narrative was the poem about the killing of Donald Trump, the kind of character Gallows yeah, the gallows. Yeah. yeah, and then the narrative was the, the you know, the, she's like on the inter being interrogated because she killed him, right? That's kind of like the through line. But you need one poem that's just just a straight up narrative so that people can kind of, right? Because you want to show that you've mastered each genre of poetry. You need a humorous poem. One of my favorite poetry programs of all time was on twerking. It was all about like the cultural history behind twerking in the African tradition and like the politics of movement. And her his funny poem was like a seminar at a at a conference that where he was teaching the audience how to twerk. And it was off the chain. And it was in the national final round. There's like hundreds of people there, and I'm one of the judges. I'm sitting right in the front like a dork. And he goes, blah, 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 so whatever. Do you know how to twerk? And he like points at me and like the whole audience is like, and I'm like, oh man, I don't, <laughs> don't focus on me, man, I keep going. <laughs> but it was dope and it was really funny and it really lifted the audience up a little. Then you want like a historical poem or a poem that's more based in like, basically, I call them historical poems. So in the twerking program, he had a program about the history of African dance and where, and where twer twerking, twerking was as a form of expression. He talked about like the Mapuka in different parts, in, uh, in Africa, and like he kind of took us back and he, he added that kind of historical angle, which then gave us the kind of context we needed to understand his topic. In the, um, the, the Trump one, his, he had that poem about gallows humor. God, what a great poem. It just walked you through what gallows humor was. It, 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 was, and it, it basically gave us a context to understand his whole point. The next one is the easiest one to find, spoken word. Spoken word or slam, those are two very, they're different things, but you can go on button poetry right now. Does anyone know button poetry? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's, here are the best YouTube channels for poetry. Button poetry, slam find, and um, there's, there's, a, there's another, but these are the two main, if you're looking for a spoken word online, hundreds and hundreds of videos. Before me and Doug, you know, Doug, Doug, Doug uh, Mungin from uh, Solano, he um, was a slam poet, and so I didn't slam. I was an actor. I wasn't trying to slam like these nerds. But I used to hang out with those guys all the time. I used to go to slams all the time, and like, I used to be blown away by literature, and I would like grab a poem, like, write a book. And then, like five years after we finished, they put it all on YouTube. So now, now slam is basically all online now. So if you could just go and find a poem that you like and start, start a program. And then finally, you need a metaphor poem. This is more of a poem that instead of talking about something literally, it uses metaphors. So like an example would be, um, last two years ago we did a program on uh, the immigrant experience, and we had one program from the perspective of a piñata. So it was basically a piñata that was basically an, an undocumented worker who was talking about what it's like to work in the metaphor of being hit and, and hanging over people as a way of showing that I'm not really a part of this culture. So it was like, you know, I've seen a lot of poetry on the wall where people are like playing the wall. But you could just have a poem with metaphors so that it gets people to, to think a little differently. Okay. And then you follow the format. A teaser, you could, this is a format that you could follow. The format for poetry programs, way simpler. 
uh, you only want to go through three or four opening things. Um, a little bit of slam poetry, a little bit of humor, a little bit of history, maybe a little more slam. Just poetry programs are more about, you know, kind of experimenting and having fun. So the structure is way lighter. But you usually want to take us through about three or four poems. Now, as I said before, th these are just guidelines. They're not rules. You could have, you could do one poem for, for nine minutes. You just got to find a really good poem. <laughs> you could have one piece to start if you want. I notice in, in at most tournaments that people have three or four to start. Some people have six, but you want to have, you know, you want to. I think part of it is you want to show that you can perform the genre. And again, you're establishing the topic, you're setting the tone, you're previewing. You're just giving us a sense of what the vibe is. <clears throat> cool. And then, oh, let's see what some folks are going to show up here. Cool. And I also kind of wrote the, um, the letter of the poem so you can know where it comes back later on. So I just call it poem A, poem B, poem C, poem D. If you'll notice, it's like a pattern. Poem A, B, C, D. And then you come back. You could, a really great pattern is poem A, B, C, D, poem A, B, C, D, poem A, B, C, D, like three, three or four times. You could follow that and put a program together tonight. Um, then, here, here's what I recommend happens after the teaser. You go into your narrative. You basically start your, you know, you give us a taste of what your main point is. And then you juxtapose that with like an abstract or metaphor poem. And then you have some more slam poetry. Um, what's, what's a really great poetry program I saw? I had seen here once last year. Uh, yeah, that twerking one was really good. Mm, yeah, I can't, can't really think of anything at the moment. <clears throat> but notice I think you should, you can always have two slam poems, you know, that just kind of talk about, you know, the topic. <clears throat> Any poets in the house? People who write poetry? Yeah, sweet. Cool, what do you write about? Uh, I do the National Poetry Writing Month. Today, yeah, sick, yeah. Every April, okay. and uh, I usually write about what's going on in my life or what music I'm listening to. Cool, yeah. One thing I want to add that's like super critical, use music, lyrics. I love it when there's like a song. Like um, one of the guys who was in the National Final last year, he did To Pimp a Butterfly. Uh, that was, he did just the whole album. Really? Like, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was dope. And he, you know, he's, he's talking to like uh, Tupac in it, and like, you know, he's got all the different songs. Like, Small he, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he basically took the whole concept album and just performed it as a singular thing, and it was it was so it was so tight because it's like Kendrick Lamar like has said that he 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 is a spoken word artist. Like he thinks of himself less as a rapper and more as like a spoken word artist. So uh, music is one of the best ways to kind of bring things in, you know? <clears throat> if you, so if you have a concept album, like, I've seen like a lot of like Immortal Technique stuff, if you listen to like the old school rap, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff that I've seen. But yeah, um, spoken word, poetry, rap is a really great. Um. Then I saw a guy do a program that was sort of about the representation of women in hip hop, and he had like some Yin Yang Twins lyrics in it, and like, but it, and it started off kind of like funny, and then like, in the middle of it, it wasn't funny. Like it was like violent, and he was basically trying to make the point that like representations of women in hip hop can, can often be very problematic and like sexist and all this stuff. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, professor uh, yeah. Uh, Robert Hawkins, I won outstanding achievement in poetry with the International Library of Poetry, and uh, Ruben Stetter and I we made wow. the same album in Vegas. So I say to my dad, I say for all the years that you let the band practice in the garage. Here's an album that I want, oh. and I felt so good to be able to give that album to my yeah. dad. Was it a gospel music? Or? Uh, yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> I was like, Ruben Stetter, oh, American Idol. Yeah, he won the second American Idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rad. Um, yeah, music is a great inspirational like source. Whenever I, I'm working with a student and I need to find some creativity, like I just put on a good album in, like, in my headphones, and it helps me to kind of find the rhythm. One of my friends, who's a really dope spoken word artist, he um, or he, he did speech and debate. Whenever he did a poetry program, he put a different song to each different poem, 
So if there was like rhythm, so that you can see the differences between them. Um, I was wondering why Solana, who's Solana? No, Doug, Doug was like the man, like he was like the poet guy. I was like, why isn't he putting up any more poetry anymore? Yeah, um, he, he, went to, he went right, but he had this great poetry program that he got to, he broke with at Nationals, and it was all about like poetry and the African American experience. And he got on a chair in the round and was like yelling at everybody. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, he was like, I'm gonna get on the chair. I was like, I don't know, don't do it, dude. And he does it, and then he didn't, he didn't get out, he didn't move on. Because I think the judges were like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we, back in the day, we just had fun. Like, we would just do fun stuff. And like, that was our singular goal, was to like, break, break boundaries. We didn't really care about winning that much. But yeah, um, you guys should do more po poetry. Okay. All right, folks, I think you guys have been like being talked at for like a long time, like all day. I just want you to, to like have a format, like if you decide I want to put a program together, like here's the format. 11, uh, 1,000 to 1,100 words of literature. Find five or six poems, five or six articles, whatever, and just follow the format and then put it together and then read it. And then meet with your coaches and they'll be like, okay, and suddenly you got a, you got a presentation. So that's it, man. I'm, like I'll let you guys go, like don't. Don't worry about it. If you want to hang out and talk, like let me know. Otherwise, like it's nice to meet you guys, and like hopefully you got some out of it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, any questions? Uh, we'll I was gonna quickly ask. Uh, do you know of any websites where we can find pieces of stuff like that? Too? So what? Uh, like that? So what? Um, what do you mean, like a, a poetry or like? Um, Let's just say POI. POI, like um, like stories or whatnot. Yeah, stories. Um, yeah. There's just some good websites um, that have good. I'm trying to think of a, there's like an, uh, a website called American Fiction or American Short Fiction. Just Google that. Like it's like American Fiction or American Short Fiction um, or Short Fiction. But they they publish a lot of articles and stuff online. Um, there's like another yeah stories. Um, I buy a lot of things on Amazon and then I return them. <laughs> you can like buy a book on Amazon. And then like return it. <laughs> yeah, like online. So like you could go on Amazon right now and like buy a book and then like return it. <laughs> so I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm like telling you all my illegal. <laughs> uh, uh, um, you can only do it like five times before they stop letting you do it. By the way, so be careful. Like the fifth time, you can't. And then like oh, two weeks go by and then they let you do it again. This is it. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I short story anthologies. Um, just Google like the. The internet, there, it depends on the, like, I usually do topic specific stuff, right? So, like, if I want to find a story about toxic masculinity, I'll, I'll, like, Google toxic masculinity narrative, and it'll take me to, like, a feminist website, or it'll take me to, like, a testimonial, and I'll use that. Um, yeah. Let me think about that, and, and I'll email your guys' as coaches with, like, sources and whatnot. I didn't come, I didn't come prepared to, like, I should, but I should have figured that out. But that's a good question, yeah. Um, anyway, it's cool. Any other questions, man? Yeah. Alright folks, man, have a great day, man. Thanks for hanging out. If you see me around, say hey. If you have any questions, I'm with it, man. I want to help. Alright. Yeah.